Yeah. Go ahead, sister. Please go ahead. Yeah. Please wait. Give me a minute. Jesus is our all in all. The only thing we need is to walk in faith. We have to believe. Thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for this really beautiful day and for giving us yet another opportunity to praise, worship, and glorify your name, Lord. And most of all, to love you like I have never done before. Again, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for having called us to be present at this meeting, for giving me all the strength and the courage now to, 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 to preach your word, Lord. So beautiful. And now, I, 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 Holy Spirit, come over here. You are your, you are in our midst and help us to understand every word and become doers of that word. And as is said in James 1.25, but the one who looks at the perfect law of freedom and remains committed to it, thereby demonstrating that he is not a forgetful hero, but a doer of what that law requires will be blessed in what he does. For so many years, I was just a listener, Lord. But today, I've got a beautiful opportunity to, to speak about the things that happened in my life that changed me, Lord, and brought me close to you. Thank you, Lord, that your love is relevant and that you will never let us go. Thank you, Lord, for not giving up on us despite the number of times we chose to hear, hurt you, Lord, and to remain silent listeners. But you constantly forgive us, Lord, with so much love when we repent. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Today we choose to surrender ourselves to you and quench ourselves in this love of yours and make this basic teaching now what we are going to think to get right into our hearts now which I'm going to, to speak about. Thank you, Jesus, for all this and much, much more. We love and adore you, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, brothers and sisters. Let's get on with our with our meeting. Have I got anyone here with me? <laughs> Everyone's so silent. Yes, praise God. Say praise something God. so that I'll give me a little encouragement yeah, yeah. to say praise something. God. Praise the Lord. Thank praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shall I? Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can. Do. Yeah, please. So my topic for today is walking by faith. So... Uh, you know something, let me start by telling you, brothers and sisters, um, um, let's stand strong in faith. My brothers and sisters, let's walk out with God, with the things we are going to learn, we learn in the Bible. Like John 1.14 says, that the word became flesh and it was dwelt amongst us. And Jesus himself is that word. Here's some good news. We are ambassadors for Christ. Like that? We are God's personal representatives. Wow, that sounds so nice. God is making an appeal to the world through you, each one of us. A responsibility and a privilege. Indeed, what a thought. What a thought. You like to be in that position? Of course. But how? How? How can we walk with, you know, what the walk out in the world? We have to take the word of God. 
study it, if we want to take up this post which Jesus wants us to be his representatives, his ambassadors, we have got to take the word, the word of God, study it, practice it, then get out into the world and live it out. A rosary or a sticker or a locket or a cross put around our neck and going to church and things like that is not enough. Because we have to walk it out in the world. And the only way we can walk in faith, literally in the world, the only way we can walk in faith is by practicing the word of God. When one is frustrated and tired in life from trying and trying so hard to be what we want to be and we fail every time, this message is definitely for you. Maybe you are frustrated with your family, your finances, your kids, your health, etc. Oh, but uh, no matter what's going on in and around us, we should hold on to God's promises. Like an anchor, not quitting. Like a Rottweiler dog, a dog, the Rottweiler dogs. They don't give in an hurry. So like that, we've got to hang on to God's promises. Don't give up. Once we anchor on the promises of God, then we will see his glory revealed. But is our life centered on our desires? And don't get into that. Our desires, don't get into that. Continue to seek the Lord first. Taking delight in the word. The Lord will replace your desires with his desires. Like that. The um, like in Psalm 37, 4, he says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. The desires of our hearts will come to pass according to his will. Whatever circumstances, God's promises never change, never changes. Jesus is the same today tomorrow and forever. John 6, 44. It's Jesus says, Jesus says, scripture, is Jesus' word. Jesus says in John 6, 44, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him that means giving him the desire to come to me. And I will raise him up from the dead on the last day. Eternal life should be the desires of our life with our heavenly father. Therefore, when we sit alone and meditate on the word, we, we have to understand it. Chew it, buy heart it. Then it starts running in our minds continuously. And that is when we have a fellowship with the Holy Spirit and Jesus continuously. Then we don't even have to pray for anything. All our problems, fear and worry, etc. is no match to Jesus. Satan is no match to Jesus because actually fear, worry, all that comes from Satan. So it's no match to Jesus. If we don't know or remember like even one scripture in our minds, if we don't have anything up there, then we have a void, a void, it's blank. And Satan can enter very easily and take hold 
then. Yes, thank you, brother. Now we come back here to square one. When you just go to church, you do everything the proper way. And then you have no joy, peace and happiness in your life. It's because you don't have the word. You don't know who you are in Jesus Christ. And because of our ignorance, we keep our switch off and we are in darkness. If only people can understand these truths. Yes, truths. I say, because I was in darkness myself for so many long years. In fact, this is like a testament of mine. And thank God, it's never too late. Never too late in God's kingdom. And so funny, you know, just today, after I wrote this out, the breakfast in Melbourne, Brother Linus was talking about this darkness. This darkness, like uh, when we are in an auditorium, and um, a small match in the dark auditorium, it expels the darkness. You light a match and that light expels the darkness. It's the same way. So when we are surrounded by darkness, we believers switch on the light for Jesus. The light has overcome the world. The darkness is the enemy. It's, it dispels everything in the presence of the light the darkness is gone. Same way, the dark, we have that power. Darkness has no power. Light dispels darkness. And God's light inside us is so powerful. When we have the light, we have the confidence and the power. The light of Christ can dispel all darkness. And only when we are lit up with the light of Christ, that is God and his word, then we can switch on the light. It is inside us. God and his light. Jesus, we are overcomers. Thank you, Jesus. With the light of Christ, we are overcomers. Thank you. So let's not be in darkness. Let's switch on that light. Only the words of Jesus, word, the word, the scripture, when you are deeply rooted in the word, every problem that is stuck to you, it will start to disappear. I promise you because it happened to me. You can go to hundreds of retreats. You can go to different preachers and you can ask them all, you know, pray for me and lay hands on me. I used to do these things. That's why from my own experience, I can truly testify and honestly say that uh, unless you have a really true relationship with our Lord and King Jesus, our lives will not change and it will continue to remain messed up and Satan will continue to you know, bash us up. So let's use the tools God has given us. Even when we go like mass every day, we go for church services and we can, you know, still live a messed up life. Going to a church service cannot guarantee us that everything in our lives will change. What guarantees me is that when I'm alone with the Lord, he gives me his love. And when I experience his love, I'm never lonely. I'm never bashed up. I'm then filled with joy and peace. It gives me the passion to face my problems and trials and tribulations. And even then, you know, black magic also, because when the light is turned on, black magic has no power over you. And it is completely destroyed. And all that comes from Satan, all this bad things, magic and all your trials, tribulations, evil stuff. Satan is a liar and all he gives is lies and people who know not the truth live all their lives in darkness. When you receive God's love, nothing in the world matters to you anymore. 
We live with the divine power of God, the word of God. And that word is Jesus Christ himself, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We must live our lives based only on his word because his word is filled with power and love. We must believe that we have been created by his power and love. We must believe that we have been created by his power and love and his power and love dwells in each one of us. Think about this. Even when we go to a counselor, each one of them will have a different story to tell you. And when things get messed up, even after they have counseled you, then you are angry with God. Same way, preachers can also go wrong. And even to the extent of killing people by giving them wrong hopes. You know, they tell people, everything is going to be all right. Jesus didn't tell us everything is going to be all right. In fact, Jesus said, when my word abides in you, you shall be my disciple. You shall know the truth and this truth will set you free. When my word abides in you, you shall be my disciple. You shall know the truth, and this truth will set you free. There is no other formula to get freedom from anything in life. But this formula which Jesus has given, and if you stick to this, the truth, it will surely set you free. Only when a person is broken, brokenhearted, he or she understands what they are going through. And then they reach out to others. Please do not waste your time like I did on unwanted things in life. Please do not waste time running after people, asking them to pray for us, to help us. But Take your stand, go to Jesus. He's waiting for you with arms wide open. Have a personal relationship with him. You don't need any intercessor to pray for you. When you have Jesus already inside of you, you go to intercessors only when your relationship with him is not strong. The day your relationship with Jesus becomes strong, you will realize you have Jesus as your mediator and you have the Holy Spirit who intercedes for you. So why do you need people to intercede for you? Make no mistake, this is not pride. This is a person who has built his home on a rock, rock. Jesus, it is time for us to stand on that rock who is Jesus himself. Jesus is the word of God. Stay on that course till the finishing line and then only you will be victorious. Love that. Isn't that good? Stay on that course till the finishing line like the horse seasons don't change by going to church and praying seasons change when a person is willing to swallow God's instructions scriptures the word Jesus Proverbs 22, 22. the word which you are now submitting to instead of negative thoughts that is now the medicine to all your flesh for their life to those who find them. I love this. This was once brother, I listened to brother Johnson and he said 
these words, which I loved, and I would always keep it in my mind. Medicine to all your flesh, the word, to, for they are life to those who find them. The word enters your mind first, then your heart, and then it becomes flesh. First the word enters your mind, then your heart, and then it becomes flesh. The word was made flesh. That scripture, I cannot get the number now, the scripture number. But Jesus said it was dwelt amongst us. The person who is seeking the word will get it. Will get that medicine. And that medicine is from heaven. This medicine will not touch your body. This medicine touches your heart. And when your heart is touched, it can heal anything. It will heal your mind and it will heal your body. So the most powerful of all medicines is the promises of God, of Jesus Christ, the word. When a person takes God's word, starts imagining it by looking through the eyes of faith. You have to imagine it. Take God's word. Imagine it. There is a manifestation. Only when a person does this, then the word reaches the heart. If the person has not used imagination, then it will not even enter the heart. When a person is in depression, what happens? Is he talking defeat? Is he a victim? Is he a failure? Is the person talking death? And it happened to me. I was in very, very deep depression a long time back. And it, often I got in and out. But only after coming to the world, I realized what a fool I was. You know, when these people, when you are in depression, you are a victim, you are a failure, and you are talking death. But the same person once upon a time would have been a very strong person. But now that person is acting like a child. Why? Because what was an oppression means the pressure that was playing on that person's mind and tanking that mind. It has made that person accept all that pressure and start imagining that all those negative things, thoughts are actually happening to him or her. And the person is depressed because she's taking uh, wrong thoughts. Satan, coming from Satan. So oppression makes way for depression. Depression is where the person has become a prisoner in his own body. My God. Why? Again, because the mind has been captivated by negative thoughts. And the person is believing those thoughts to be so true as if they were manifested. So just the same way the person can get depressed from oppression, he can also get the word in his heart by continuously paying attention to God's word. Instead of taking those negative thoughts, take the scripture, take the word, put that in your heart. Imagine that. Is taking place not negative thing imagine the word is taking place in your body you are getting healed you're getting everything is already finished and done jesus finished and did it for us submit to god's word believe it focus on that god's word and getting it into your heart imagining it now the person can get powerful and is at rest and is actually Bringing those things to pass, that's the manifestation. That's why Proverbs 4, 22, 22, Proverbs 4, 22, 22 says, verse 22, 22, that they who are in the word and are attentive to the word and visualizing that word is the medicine to all your flesh but they are alive to those who seek them. Not to everyone. 
So if you want medicine from heaven, then you have to get to find the word promising you that medicine. They are alive to only those who seek them, not to everyone. So the one who is seeking, searching, researching, and uh, when he or she finds it, it's a medicine to all their flesh. And let me tell you, this is the most powerful medicine available today. Always. And it brings healing to your whole body without any side effects. <laughs> Brother Johnson, praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Really, this medicine cured me because this medicine doesn't touch your body but touches your heart. That's the word of God. Heals your heart. And when your heart is healed, it heals your mind, heals your body, and other relationships, your finances, is anything. And that's why the key factor is your spirit or heart. It's got to be healed with the word. When your heart is broken, when your heart is down, I mean, a broken heart, a person who was healthy, even can fall sick in no time. We can get into a fear factor and get depressed and get into a mess. So restless, unable to get even one night's good sleep. But God's medicine is there for all those who find it. God's promises. And it will bring healing to all their flesh. The medicine is the promises of God in Christ Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It gives you a guarantee. No side effects. In fact, you can even overdose on it. Wow. In fact, if that happens, in no time you will overcome your crisis. Now is the main point. Listen carefully. The prescription is given, medicine got, but follow instructions carefully or you can have no effect. <laughs> Whatever be your crisis, your problem, your focus has got a big role to play in your everyday life. If your focus is wrong, your destination will go wrong. Right? Right thinking can change a wrong action. But wrong thinking cannot change right action. Wrong thinking. So right thinking will get your prayers answered, but wrong thinking can never get your prayers answered. And what is right thinking? What is right thinking? What is right thinking? Right thinking is aligning your thoughts to the word of God. Wow, I, my God. After writing this down, it's really, really so, so wonderful. It's gone right into me. And this aligning your thoughts, when you're aligning your thoughts to the word of God, it's called faith. Right thinking, faith, aligning your thoughts to the word of God. Now you're walking in faith. So this brings us to another big gigantic step to receiving God's abundance in our life. In Hebrews 11 verse 1, Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Faith will make your prayers work, but prayers cannot make our faith work. 
to sum up all this, what I have read, let's put into practice these following points. Uh, have faith in God. In Mark eleven twenty two, Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. Mark eleven twenty two. So let's sum up all this, you know, with points. Point one, pay attention to God's word. Number one. Number two, incline your ears to the word. Keep hearing. Keep hearing and hearing, incline your ears to the word. Continue to, to hear it. I promise you, this is really, really fantastic. It works so beautifully. Third, imagine it. Keeping that word before your eyes in a vision. Imagine it. Keep it in, and the number four is the main thing. Now it enters your heart. After you're imagining, you're hearing, then you're imagining. And now it's entered your heart and not to, don't allow it to leave your heart ever. Keep it there, seal it there with the Holy Spirit. Remember, fact can be changed. Truth cannot be changed. Truth is for eternity. Truth is spiritual law and the Bible says God sent his word and healed them. Not God sent his word to heal them but God sent his word and healed them. Beautiful, isn't that? So that's it brothers and sisters. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Holy Spirit, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. I hope I was able to, to deliver that with all faith and, you know, assurance. Thank Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, brothers and sisters. If, brother, you can you make a, a, a prayer on that, a closing prayer, Brother Sola, Sandeep? Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, sister. Did you like it? Yes, very much. Can you make a prayer, sister, then? A closing I'm prayer? No, I'm not good in that. Okay, Brother Sandeep will do it. Thank you, loving okay. Heavenly Father. We thank you, we pray for you. We thank you for the word of God, for Sister Joyce, share us, Lord. We thank you for all the work you are, for your word. You sent your word and healed us. Thank you, Lord, for your words, Amen. for protecting us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you Lord. Thank you. We believe that words which we hear, it will plant it in our heart and bring abundant harvest. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you Lord. Thank you, everyone, for listening.